I'm so excited to announce that this is our last and final module for the media ministry training program. You've made it. I'm so excited and yeah, I'm just so uh, grateful that I get to walk with you along this journey of being able to learn um, the media skills that you need in order to help your ministry to grow. Um, so our last module for this program is actually going to be on social media. And so before I get into like more logistics about um, how to use social media, I'm going to pass it off to... David, um, who's going to share with you more about branding and why branding is an important part of social media. What is branding? People in ministry are scared of this word, but what we are talking about is storytelling. We are trying to help people to see that our ministry is worth their time, their energy, and their money. We are telling the story of our partners, the people who work with us, our staff, our volunteers, and we're telling the story of who we are serving. If we can do a great job with our logo, with the words we use, the pictures we use, the video we use, people will get excited. We are trying to overcome this problem. People are busy. People don't read everything. So we are trying to help them feel something. We're trying to take them on a journey. We're trying to give them a story that's compelling. You ever watch a story and the moment the characters are introduced, you're hooked. You ever read a book, and the moment you see the problem in the book, you're like, I need to figure out what happens at the end of this book. That's good branding. You're helping people to see a problem, and you are their guide to take them on this journey. If we do that, then we are helping people, okay? Because people want to help. People want to feel useful. People want to feel like they're making a difference. How does your ministry help people do that? Be careful with the words you use. Be careful with the pictures you choose. And how do you do videos? This is all part of telling your story to people. What is your Bible verse? What is the Bible passage that convinces you that this ministry is from God? That this is in the long line of Christian tradition? That Christians should have always been doing this and in this moment and in this time, this was what God wants for you. See, we have to help people to see that the Bible is coming alive right now in this moment. That's how we get people excited. That is not just your great idea, but that this is God's idea happening right now. And the key is the right now. If we don't help people see help people see the urgency of what you're doing, they're not going to care. They're going to wait. We don't want people to wait. So we're helping them to see the Bible lived out right now. We want to see God's mission lived out right now. So think about it. What verse do you tell your staff? What verse do you tell your volunteers to get people excited, to help them to see that this is truly God's heart? Now, how do you communicate that? Is there a picture you can take? Is there, are there words you can write to describe this Bible passage? Is there a video that you can do to help people see that this Bible passage is what God wants? That's branding. That's storytelling. It's helping people to see the Bible and giving it color. See, people often read Bible stories and they see it in black and white, right? They, they put it back in their memory and they're like, okay, maybe one day I'll remember this. So what you are doing is you're bringing color to that Bible passage. You're making it come alive in their head so that when you tell the story of your ministry, they're thinking of that passage and they're saying, oh, I remember this passage. I can see how your ministry is living out this passage. You're bringing out the depth, the story, the color of that passage helping them to see in this moment, you are living out God's mission. People want to know more about your organization, but what they want to know is they want to know what do your volunteers look like? What kind of staff join your organization, your ministry? They want to know who are the people who are excited about your ministry and where do they come from? Because they want to see, can they be part of your team? They want to know how old people are, the diversity, ethnic diversity that exists on your team. They want to know the theology of the people on your team, and they want to know who do you serve. So when you take pictures, when you do video, think about those things. Think about who, what kind of people are you trying to attract. You won't attract everyone, and that's okay. Some people don't like doing youth ministry. 
Some people don't like serving the old. Some people are scared to go overseas. So you're trying to help people to see your organization looks like this. We're trying to bring in people who do this. But also, we are trying to serve this kind of population. We're trying to serve these people. So the words you use, do you attract people who are excited about these things? The pictures you use, who are you trying to excite with the pictures you use? The videos you take, why is that exciting? Do people like to see these kind of videos? That's what you're thinking about, okay? So what I like to do is I like to think I'm 35 years old. Would a 35 year old Chinese American man like this kind of video? Well, I run my organization. Hopefully people who are like me want to see this kind of video. But now I'm also thinking some of our volunteers are 70 years old. So I'm also thinking, would this video speak to a 70 year old? Because that's what our organization looks like. Our organization is from 16 years old to 70 years old. So I'm thinking about the words I choose and how do I speak to a 16 year old and 70 year old. Now, some of your ministries are much more narrow. Okay, and so the pictures you use and the words you use, let's attract those kind of people. We want to create urgency and we want to create excitement. The reason why we write emails, the reason why we do videos and pictures is to generate this excitement in the people we are speaking to, it's to generate urgency in the people we are reaching. If people don't feel like they need to jump in right now, they will never jump in. They will never volunteer. They will never give. They will never be part of your ministry. So in the way you communicate to people, help them to see why this is exciting, why this is a party they have to go to, why if they don't help, then you can't complete your mission. And guess what? You can't complete your mission unless people join you. So think about the things you're communicating to people. Are you just saying, we are busy? And that's what a lot of communication is. We are busy. People are not excited about organizations being busy. People are excited about ministries accomplishing their mission, meeting real needs that need to be met right now. So think about the stories you are telling. Why is this problem you're solving? Why is this so difficult? So for example, for us, we serve orphans. Orphans don't have families, right? They are vulnerable. They don't have parents to take care of them. So we are trying to help people to understand that we need to meet these kids where they are. Because imagine kids on the street with no parents, right? Imagine them for 10 minutes. You know bad things will happen. Now imagine them over years. We're trying to create that urgency. We're trying to help people to see why they need to get involved right now, why people's souls are in jeopardy right now. Excitement. We want to help people to see that they want to join our mission teams. They want to join our ministries because they will have a good time. And this is what they will experience. They will experience joy. They will experience unity. They will feel like they are living out God's calling. Why? Well, tell that story. Tell that story of why a 70-year-old woman volunteering for your ministry will have a good Saturday night. Why she will feel appreciated. Why she will feel like she is walking in God's plan. Talk about the people who are already part of your ministry. Why do people love volunteering with you guys? Why do people love giving up their summers to go on trips with you? What's exciting about that? We are trying to engage people in the language we use, the pictures we use, and the videos we use. Thanks, David, for sharing with us about branding and about storytelling and why it's important to have a biblical purpose when it comes to sharing our stories. So now I'm going to get more into the technical part of social media and basically how to use it. Um, so there are three or four main social media platforms. Um, we generally tend to use Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and Twitter if you're really into um, sharing about news articles or sharing short blurbs. Um, but for the most part, we'll be focusing more on Facebook and Instagram. Um, so it's really important to figure out which platform is best for your ministry. Um, and that really has to do with your target audience and your demographic. And so you want to look at um, if your target audience is like 30s and above and to a little bit older audience, then Facebook tends to be a more popular space for um, the older demographic in general um, to work with. Um, but if you're trying to target more teens or more college age um, people, then it tends to work better to use Instagram. 
So while it's important to have a good social media presence, it's not necessarily helpful for you um, to stretch yourself too thin by posting on all the social media platforms all the time. So you generally wanna focus on one or two at max um, social media platforms that you really wanna engage and reach your audience with. Video thumbnails basically help to give a preview of what the video is gonna be about. And so you wanna be as clear as possible with what the thumbnail image is. So to design a video thumbnail, um, I usually like to pick a screenshot or an image that I took that's part of the video that's really captivating. Um, and then I always wanna make sure that I'm putting someone's face in it. So especially if you are the face of your ministry, put your face because if people see your face, that's how they connect it with the ministry work. Um, putting a landscape shot or um, a shot of someone's back is not something that's attractive or something that's gonna engage um, your audience. Um, so make sure you always have a picture of someone's face and someone who's related to the ministry in some way. Um, and to design your thumbnail, I like to either use um, Canva or I use Adobe Spark. And they have templates that are really easy to use if you're not good at designing things. You can pick a template and put in your image and just change the text um, and then download it and use it for um, your video. And so it's a really simple and easy way. I will show you a demo of how I work or I do my video thumbnails so that you have a better understanding of, yeah, how easy and simple it really is. It seems like a very small step, um, but it's a really important step to getting people um, to better understand your brand so that it's cohesive, so using similar colors, um, but also to better understand, um, yeah, what your video is about. So after you've decided what platform to use for your ministry work, and where you wanna post your video, um, an important part is creating a posting schedule. And so I use uh, two different scheduling apps to help me to organize all of my posts so that I can pre-schedule them ahead of time um, for the week before or even weeks, weeks before. Um, so the two that I use are Hootsuite and Facebook Creator Studio. Facebook Creator Studio works for Facebook and it also works for Instagram. Hootsuite uh, works for Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and it's a lot um, more uniform in terms of posting, but there are certain restrictions on what you can post to Instagram specifically, and there's a lot of bugs with it. So recently I've been using Facebook Creator Studio, and it's been, um, yeah, it's been really helpful for me. So what is a posting schedule? So this might be a little bit more complicated for what you're trying to do right now, but I want to give you some basic foundations so that in the future you can take it and run with it. So a posting schedule is basically a weekly schedule of when you're going to be posting different content. So I like to post my content Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, what helps too is if you look at your engagement on your platforms first and see what time and what day people are most active. And so after you've looked at that and the insights tab um, on your platform, then you know when to schedule your posts. Um, this will also be helpful for you to understand more about your audience and who you're trying to reach. Um, so yeah, so once you've created a schedule, um, the next thing you want to do is to maintain your platform. Um, and so that means that you want to engage with people. And so engagement is a huge part of social media because if you're just posting stuff and people aren't talking to you and there's no discussion going on, then it's not really social. It's actually more anti-social than anything. And so your goal is to create conversations with people. And so not only are people watching your content, but they're responding because they like what they see and they wanna get involved. And so um, there's a multitude of ways that you can boost engagement. Um, but a great way is just to talk to people, um, to start conversations with different orgs or different people that you follow, um, to expand your network of who you're following first, and that way you can get a better idea of who's out there and who's interested in your ministry work. Um, so yeah, I hope that was helpful for you. Um, I know that there's a lot of other things we could cover about social media, but these are really the basics that you'll need in order to get your social media platform started if you haven't already, or to be able to boost the engagement or um, better understand how to reach the audience that you're striving for. So thank you for being a part of this media ministry training program. Before you complete this project, um, I'm gonna have you submit your final video 
and to post it online on your social media platform so we can share about it as well. Also, before you um, click out, uh, make sure you fill out the um, feedback form that I've listed on the assignments page um, so I can get a better idea of how to make this program even better for the next person. Um, so thank you, and I look forward to continuing to working with you. Bye!